uh, that instability in payroll, instability in revenues to the government discourages local investment. That's one of the reasons miners don't invest in the local economy. They put their homes somewhere else, is they don't know how long that mine will be paying them uh, that wage. The same with government. Uh, local school boards are hesitant to invest if they don't know how long the stream of, of uh, tax revenue is coming to them uh, is going to la last. If they're afraid the mine will shut down and leave them holding the, holding the bonds. Uh, the, in commuting, I've already talked about uh, the employment of non-residents uh, drains away many of the benefits. Uh, displaced workers hanging on leads to uh, higher joblessness uh, rates, higher unemployment rates. Uh, company town mentality. Uh, if, if you're relying on an outsider coming in and providing you with jobs, that has an impact uh, that tends to discourage an entrepreneurial approach uh, where a population is hunting for ways in which they can uh, supplement their salaries or provide employment for, the, for themselves. Uh, the net result is what we see in many, many mining areas, which is not prosperity, uh, but underdevelopment, run-down infrastructure, and economic distress. Uh, if one looks across all of the mining-dependent communities in the United States, I, I, I did this several years ago, uh, looking at all of the mine, all the communities, all the counties where 20% or more of earnings were coming from uh, uh, mineral operations, uh, and comparing that to communities that aren't uh, uh, mining dependent, uh, one doesn't find higher wages, one finds lower levels of income. Uh, despite the high paid jobs, one finds higher unemployment rates. Uh, despite the flows of revenues to governments, uh, one finds run-down local in infrastructure, slower growth in jobs, income, and population. And that includes almost all of the areas we recognize as mining dependent. Some of them, like Appalachia, the nation's first mining district and longest mining district, has become synonymous with poverty. Uh, such that the federal government has been working on decades, for decades, with Republican and Democratic presidents trying to do something with the poverty. Now, I mean, that's a startling and disturbing uh, uh, characteristic of a very important mining area. Uh, and we need to understand how that could happen. That's what the anomaly in the title of the talk is all about. But you can go to my backyard, Butte, Montana, and Anaconda, Montana, uh, not hardly prosperous, and it hasn't been prosperous for a very long period of time, long before the mine shut down. Uh, but one could uh, 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 look at Silver City in New Mexico or the Globe Miami uh, area in Arizona, both of which areas I, I worked on. One can look at the Iron Range uh, in Minnesota. That's uh, attempting to go through a, 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 a renaissance, uh, uh, but not fundamentally changing the, the character. One can look at the uranium uh, belts, the gold and silver towns, uh, many of which now become amusement parks, uh, uh, because uh, to, to take advantage of the, uh, I don't know, Western charm or adventure associated with the ghost towns.